Yeah, I am not really sorry. I always say sorry, but I'm really not. Hello, everybody, and welcome to my channel. You have reached the recap for episode number, I believe we're on number 15. Who made up the title for this episode? It's so stupid. Honey spooning? Dumb as hell. Let's get right into this review. Thank you all for watching my last video, even though I posted it a little late. I am really, really sorry. And I have some good news to share with you guys at the end of this video that is not reality show related, but I want to talk to you guys about it anyway. Chloe and Michael wake up to start their day after what seems like an uneventful after the wedding night. Truth be told, I don't feel like they have any chemistry. I don't know if you guys feel the same. If you feel the same, post it in comments. Okay. Anyway, um, Chloe talks about her sleeping panic attacks, which I literally had to research it because I never heard of that in my life. And I don't always want to say, you're a liar. Sometimes, most of the time, I'll go and I'll research. And sure enough, there is a such thing called sleeping panic attacks that happens to people sometimes. I guess when she feels nervous or it's a new environment, I think a lot of us get a little jolted when we're waking up in a new environment. I don't know if that's the same. I don't want to discredit her experience as annoying as I find her. So yeah, they're, they're not talking about anything much at the end of this conversation, pretty much. Chloe is just letting Michael know that touch is the way to get closer to her. Becca and Austin, Becca looks so cute there. Becca and Austin are out and about at his family's, um, you know, I think they're in Philly right now. They're sightseeing. For some reason, she brings up Hamilton the musical because I guess she's at this historical site where Hamilton used to be at or whatever. We're back with Chloe and Michael. They've jetted off to the fabulous Colorado Springs for their honeymoon. And Lifetime producers and experts alike, you guys couldn't do better for Michael. I mean, he didn't deserve better than this being jolt, being jolted. That would have been funny. But uh, being jilted at the altar, you don't think he deserved a little better? You guys couldn't fly him to Florida or something? Or Anyway, you guys are annoying. Michael is feeling pretty positive about him and Chloe's budding relationship. And he's relieved that Chloe doesn't feel like a secondhand citizen because she was not the first freaking choice. Okay, I would feel second. I would feel like second place. Tell you that much. Chloe sees Michael's big old bags. Chloe says, being the minimalist that I am, and that word is very hard, I'm really sorry. Being the minimalist that I am, I am so curious to know what is in your bag. And it just turns out that Michael has a bunch of random crap that he likes to wear because, you know, he's very eccentric. He likes to dress up. He likes to change his look. He likes to look cookie, whatever. So now we're here with Brennan and Emily and... Brennan is like, why don't you go get the walking stick or the talking stick? Sorry. What I wish you get a walking stick so you can walk the hell out of this show and I'll never have to see you again. He tells Emily, why don't you go get the talking stick? Um, Emily, is this a talking stick? Number one, it looks like a paddle you can spank somebody with. And if anybody needs a mother freaking spanking or paddling, it's freaking Brennan. All right. What, what is this about? You got the chopped meat on there. You need to chop some meat. I won't tell you which meat on Brennan you need to chop. Emily says that They've decided to use a talking stick to focus more on what each other is saying individually. Um, Emily, you have no problem with your communication. Brennan is the problem. So I know this was his freaking suggestion. Unless this was an expert's suggestion that I missed somewhere. This is ridiculous. Emily says basically this exercise is to build back trust because apparently according to the meeting they had with Dr. Pia, she somehow broke his trust. Girl, he is literally gaslighting you to believe it's something that you did when you did absolutely nothing. So breaking his trust is actually telling the truth and making him look bad on television. That's what breaking his trust means, Emily. So Emily tells Brennan trust is everything, consistency is big with her, and listening not interrupting is the way all right and continuing to be patient and showing that he cares brennan says he cares a lot about her and he wants her in his life i'm sorry what brennan is such a freaking liar he gets on my damn nerves he's such a liar a liar if you got paid to lie you'd be a billionaire i promise he said losing emily would suck and that's why he's trying to make it so that doesn't happen and emily says that she cares about him a lot but she's afraid that sometimes she's losing herself girl you're losing yourself all the time not sometimes and she says 
by putting up with crap and not being treated the way that she feels she deserves. Emily says that she's afraid that Emily says she's afraid of how she cares because she gets very emotional. That's not always healthy for her. So Brennan says for him, he thinks that it's important not to blur the lines between relationship and friendship. First of all, this show, as I said before in past recaps, this is not called friendship at first sight. I've never said that. Okay, sorry. But this is not, this show is not called friendship at first sight. Brennan is saying for him, it's important not to blur the lines between relationship and friendship. He says that it's easy in this process. Yeah, obviously, because this is supposed to be a marriage, not a friendship. Brennan, you freaking buffoon. He says, just trying to navigate everything friendly, but without overstepping, whatever that means. Brennan says, it's important not to blur the lines between relationship and friendship. He says, that's easy in this process. Just trying to navigate friendly without overstepping. He says they're doing a good job of showcasing their friendship. I don't know why you need to showcase your friendship because this is supposed to be a marriage, you freaking idiot. Anyway, I'm getting mad. So Emily says, yeah, the friendship thing, that's great and all, but um, for, I had different expectations for this situation. And Brennan asks her what she's talking about. Emily basically tells Brennan that she doesn't feel like he treats her like a friend. And then Brennan cuts her off. And says, you sure you want to do this? You know what? I would embarrass your ass on national TV, Brennan. I am not Emily. I would in freaking embarrass you because you are controlling. You're trying to control the narrative. You're trying to control what she says. He really doesn't want her to say what she's really thinking. He wants to control her every word. Brennan says, tell me specifically what part you don't feel great about. Emily said, last night at the wedding, uh, I didn't feel like you was giving any type of effort to have fun or even hang out as a friend. And Emily says, sometimes uh, a little more effort should be taking place. And that it hurts her feelings when people come up to her and say that it looks like you guys aren't even friends. Brennan says, someone said that to you? And Emily says, yes. And Brennan says, well, if people want to say that, that's unfortunate, but it's up to us whether we want to ignore it. We need to just focus on us and asks Emily if she agrees. Emily says she agrees, but says it's a whole different thing when a close friend comes and tells her something like that. It hurts her feelings even more. And so then Brennan says we need time to move in the right direction. Fool, you don't have much time. You guys are on D-Day and we already know what's going to happen on D-Day. Okay, divorce. That's what's going to happen. Emily says Brennan cares about her a lot but she doesn't feel a lot of that most of the time she says maybe she needs to go back to having no expectations emily so you're basically willing to accept the lower bare minimum because this is not even the bare minimum this is below bare minimum to me you're willing to accept it and i don't get it i really feel like you guys signed a contract like if you're like the last i don't know last couple that you can't leave i don't know what the hell the problem is this is like a game of survivor okay and it sucks i hate it so Michael and Chloe are headed off to their honeymoon in paradise, a tropical island. Nope, 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 nope. Sorry, guys. That's not what I wrote in my notes because that didn't happen. Um, They got a honeymoon right there in Colorado Springs, Colorado. I'm not saying it's an ugly place. It's a beautiful, beautiful freaking place. But God darn it. I don't want a freaking vacation in Queens. I live here. Can I please go somewhere exotic? Thank you very much. So Michael is trying to keep up the positivity like i said before he keeps saying it so i gotta keep saying it all right and so michael asks chloe if she has any expectations for the honeymoon and chloe basically just says she's excited to keep learning more about him um about really about each other together michael i, I don't dislike you but you're really coming off like you're the plan you're the actor and you would get on my damn nerves with all these questions like what is up with all these questions chloe says only time will tell if her and michael would grow chloe says that only time will tell if her and michael will grow a lifelong connection they have to take it as it comes she doesn't want it to feel forced or that they're holding themselves back from what they would naturally do and then she says hashtag honeymoon girl shut up emily meets up with claire emily asks claire how she's doing and claire says she's feeling good but after Cameron's surgery, he's been pretty much sleeping a lot all, all week. And then she says to herself, oh, he's recovering. Girl, it doesn't matter what he's doing. He's not with you anymore. So stop worrying about him. I don't know why you're putting so much stress into what he's doing and how he's feeling. I understand you're concerned, but Claire lets Emily know 
that she doesn't want to be over here having a good time while Cameron is over there hurting and in recovery. Emily says she feels like Cameron would want her to have fun. Emily says there's there's only so much you can do. Claire asks Emily how she's doing and Emily says that it's taking a different mental toll on her trying to fix him in the relationship. Who are you trying to fix? Who, who are you trying to fix, Emily? He needs to fix himself. That's what he needs to do, all right? She feels like it has been basically harder to reset a friendship because it's a it's more of a weird mind F. It's talking about the friendship thing playing with her head. Emily says that Brendan is not even treating her like a friend. And Claire says the way he nitpicks the things that you say is not something that a friend would do. She says that Brennan is silencing her and it's not fair. Claire says friendship where? Where's friendship? Claire says Brennan is trying to mold Emily into something that she's not and that he needs to let her be herself. And Emily says Brennan was fine with her being herself for a really long time until it wasn't in his favor and in the image that he wanted to portray on television and whatever the hell else he wanted out of this. Claire tells Emily to never not be herself. Sorry for the double negatives. All right. But Claire tells Emily to never not be herself for some raggedy ass man. Okay, she didn't say that part. That last part I did. Emily says that Brennan doesn't like when she's herself. Claire says she has no freaking words for that. Okay, except F that. And F, I would say an F him. So Emily says it's hurtful for people to say they care and then treat her differently. And Claire says that Brennan seems very closed off with an open-minded person. And she says that it's clear in Brennan's behavior that he's closed off despite what his mouth is saying. And Emily says that this is really the best that he can do. Emily, girl, if that's his best, then I need you to end this experience right now. I almost said experiment. Same difference. I need you to end this now. And I need you all to just end this whole season early, please. Claire says, but even by saying that that's the best he can do, you're giving him the benefit of the doubt. That's beautiful and all, girl. But so Emily says it's sad. She doesn't know what to do. She's not giving up, but it's very hard. Emily, what the hell is hard about leaving somebody who's clearly a butthole? Tell me what tell me what is hard about that. Girl, I'm getting tired of you too. So we're back with Chloe and Michael and I'm so sick of this freaking fake honeymoon bull crap. It's so fake, I swear to God. Both of them are actors at this point, okay? They go off to their little adventure and are we playing Survivor? Are we doing role rules? Or what are we doing here? Are we doing the challenge? What are we doing here? So now they're here with someone who calls himself Marquette. He is the leader of this activity. And dude, why you got an old black lady's name? Oh yes, Black History Month. By the way, happy Black History Month, people. <laughs> anyway, Chloe says the best way for the both of them to learn each other is to put themselves in danger, basically. <laughs> you're crazy. Okay, you're really crazy. You know how they always make it look like the um, the cast set these things up? We all know as the producers in Lifetime, but you know what? Let's just play along. Let's just freaking play along like we have for all of these freaking episodes so far. Chloe claims that she booked this thing because she's afraid of heights, okay? So this is really reminding me of that horrible, horrible time I reviewed Teen Mom Family Reunion. It was so bad, y'all. It was so freaking bad. I just wanted to freaking cry every week that I had to review that damn show. But do y'all remember that? Man, you can go look on my channel after this video and you can go watch those videos. But oh my God, that was complete torture. And this is torturous too. So I don't know whose big idea this was, but I'm telling you this. When I'm on my honeymoon, I'm not moving more than my fingers and toes. And I mean it. Chloe is stressed about the heights. All right. So they're doing this rock climbing adventure or whatever the heck they're doing in there. You know, they get to the end. And Chloe says that this pulled her out of her comfort zone. And, and she's happy to have Michael there. All right. They talk about fears. And Chloe asks Michael about his. And he basically has a fear of the ocean. So yeah, they're uh, standing here talking and uh, Michael is so concerned about his hair. I'm sorry, that's such a turn off. Like I'm talking to you, the wind's blowing. Just let the freaking wind blow through your hair, okay? Leave it alone. So tonight is Brennan and Emily's expert visit with Dr. Cal. Emily says there's always a lot of anxiousness because her and Brennan don't have the smoothest conversations. And she's always worried about saying the wrong thing and sparking a reaction in Brennan, which is freaking crazy. That is abusive, girl. I know you, I don't know if you even see it. I really don't, but that's pretty abusive that you have to walk on eggshells around Brennan based on how he feels about what you say. 
That's crazy. Anyway, she says he's very sensitive to certain topics. I bet he is. He's sensitive to certain topics, those topics being the truth. Brennan's here and asks Emily if there's anything she's nervous about. And she says she gets nervous if she doesn't say the right things. Brennan says this whole friendship reset has been to remove all the pressure and just focus on the good things. Uh-huh. Just focus on the good things. Shut up, Brennan. You always want to try to control everything. And what are the good things? What are the good things? Because I don't know what they are. You haven't really brought anything good to the table. He says that they've had a lot of talks, so hopefully they're finally on the same page. So now we're here with Dr. Cal, and he asks how things have been going. He says he knows they haven't been setting the romantic world on fire. Um, Dr. Pastor Cal, they're not even um, they're not even warm. They're literally sitting on ice on icicles here. Okay, they're literally sitting on blocks of ice in this quote romance that they're supposed to be having. They're supposed to be friends. Cold as ice. Dr. Cal asks Emily if she's happy and she lies and says yes. Are you nuts? Emily, have you lost your damn mind? Have you freaking lost your mind? I really think that Brennan has got you very effed up mentally. Because at this point, this is getting to be very embarrassing and it's making me mad because the, I feel like the producers should have been stepped in to protect Emily and took her out of this situation and said, you know what, to hell with the experiment, we're removing you because, you know, we feel that your mental might be damaged with this bull crap going on right now. Emily goes on to say if she didn't care about him and she wasn't happy, she would leave. Girl, please. So Emily says that she still has faith in Brennan and she respects what he needs. He doesn't respect what you need, though. Hmm. She's happy to let him do whatever and let the friendship reset. But she's not down with the friendship thing. So Dr. Cal says the friend zone is not the best place to be. That's not what the intention of this whole thing was. What he's going to do is he's going to share their original interviews from when they first applied to be on Married at First Sight to basically see if they're the same people they were back then. I got a feeling one of them isn't going to be. I guess you can guess which one that is. Dr. Cal. Pastor Cal. If y'all ever hear me say doctor, forgive me, okay? Just know that I meant pastor. I keep saying doctor for some reason. I cannot figure out why I keep saying doctor. Pastor Cal says that he wants them to see what they were both asking for when they first started. Pastor Cal claims that the experts do their absolute best to match them as best as they possibly can, you freaking liar. Liar. You guys know damn well that this show needs drama to stay on the air. You guys haven't stayed on the air for 17 years, or seasons rather, without having some drama in the mix. And if you think that I don't believe that a lot of these couples are plants and fakes, like in this situation, it's definitely Chloe and Michael. I'm really sorry, but I mean, come on. Emily's interview was played and she was the same exact person that she is now. And Pastor Cal, I'm really sorry to tell you, but you need some lotion. Okay, and I'm one to talk. Pastor Cal asks Brennan, is Emily the same person that she was in this interview? And he says, yes. And then he asks Emily, uh, you know, what do you think? Is it consistent? And she says, yes. So now we get to Brennan and I don't know who this person was that was in this interview with Dr. Pia. And it's really funny that he had his initial, oops, sorry. It's really funny that Brennan had his initial interviews with Dr. Pia. And now with Dr. Pia, he's so combative. Interesting. Because he has sort of a history with her, you know, so you would think you'd be less combative with someone you have sort of a history with. You know what I mean? Brennan's flashback interview, he says that he's coachable and he wants to get better at relationships. He says he thinks that Married at First Sight was the platform for him to find the woman of his dreams. So Dr. Pia asks, what does your spouse need to be on the lookout for? Brennan says he's sensitive. That part was totally correct. You're definitely sensitive. You're a big baby. Okay. Brennan also says that he can be emotional at times with his tone, but he's not actually whatever that means. And Dr. Pia asks him, how does he see himself cultivating trust in the marriage? And do you know what his answer was? His answer was his actions making her the priority. Really, Brennan, you were really putting on a Oscar winning performance at this interview. I mean, we all know you're a dirt bag. You're trying your best to keep their dirt baggishness off the TV, but we see right through you. You can hide it all you want. You can act a certain way on camera all you want, but we see that you're freaking dirty. What other elements do you feel like are really going to be important for a successful marriage? Yeah, I'm very loving and affectionate and I'm very communicative. And I think that is huge in a relationship and I'm a pretty selfless guy. 
The lies. There you the go. Lies. This bitch. The lies. Telling you. I will spare you guys the rest of the lies. Um, like I always say, this is supposed to be a recap. I'm not going to be posting every single little thing that was said. But just know that Brennan was being a completely different person in this video here. As opposed to how he is right now. As you've heard a little bit of it. And for one, I'm over it. I'm over him. Pastor Cal asks Emily how she feels about what she just saw. And she, she has the nerve to say she sees some of the qualities that he was talking about. I think you mean... You, you are seeing some of the things that he always says, some of the catchphrases that he always says. She says that she also sees some inconsistencies. And Emily says, because, you know, they're interviewing, so they're on their A game. And Emily, where'd you get that shirt from? Don't think I don't know. This is absolutely beautiful. I freaking love it. Emily says that she feels like the quote, trust the process that Brennan was talking about was cut pretty short. And Pastor Cal asks Emily, if the guy in that video is the man who she is currently married to. Emily says that she heard a lot of what she wanted to hear, but when it comes down to it, she doesn't know who the hell that person is. Emily says that she's hearing all the things she wants to hear, but behind the scenes, a lot of that stuff is not there. Emily says that Brendan spoke the truth of what he believes in. I don't know if I don't know if he believes in that, I'm just saying. For myself, I don't believe he believed in it. I believe he thought it sounded good. But Emily says there was quite the exaggeration going on. Brennan says that it's different when you're in a romantic situation. And Pastor Cal says friendship was not the intention. And Pastor Cal says that he tells people don't use the word friendship in regards to your relationship because it puts a boundary around your relationship. Pastor Cal asks, what are your expectations moving forward? Brennan says the same thing he's been saying for the past 14 episodes, 15 now. We're just going to go along and we're going to do whatever feels right. And if we feel like going deeper, darn it, we will. Pastor Cal asks Brennan, what if Emily is up to do more? Are you okay with that? And Brennan says, sure. And this is Emily's face, but she doesn't believe him. Pastor Cal asks Emily what she thinks and she says that she feels like it's pretty much to Brennan it's more important for her to cater to his sensibilities as it is vice versa. Emily says that she doesn't want to push boundaries in general which would lead to him being more closed off. Pastor Cal is bumbling over his words and I swear if I didn't have the closed caption on and if I wasn't able to keep rewinding you guys would be in trouble because you wouldn't even know what the hell I was saying because I didn't know what they were saying. Pastor Cal thinks the fear of it going too fast or the fear of not knowing where they wanted to go is keeping both of them at bay. Pastor Cal, the only fear that's going on right now is the fear of Brennan by Emily. I don't understand why you're not interfering, why you're not saying anything, because I've watched this show for so many seasons and you've had no problem saying things in the past. And now all of a sudden, cat's got your tongue. And I can't understand why. I really can't. Pastor Cal goes on to tell them that he wants them to get the full benefit of this experiment and said the same thing that I said, which by the way, this is the first time I'm watching this, guys. I actually missed all of this because it's so, I'm sorry, I'm not going to say it's boring, but I mean, be happy for these recaps because my recaps, I hope, are a whole lot more interesting than the actual show. But I'm not going to lie. I'll be snoozing on Wednesday night, okay? I'll be watching like 30 minutes and I'll be out like a light, all right? And then when I get ready to do the recap is when I'm like seeing this for the first time. And Pastor Cal says that these two, he says, you guys are going to have to work that out with each other. Pastor Cal, you're an expert. You're supposed to help them work it out. What the F are you talking about? That's all you have to say? That's all you have to say? Well, that's weak and that's sad and I'm over it all. I'm over you and I'm over this season. We're back with Michael and Chloe and we're talking about Chloe's growing up living in New Mexico. I don't know anything about her, but I didn't learn anything that I need to share with you guys here. When I tell you guys that these conversations that these two are having are the most boring conversations I have ever heard in my life. And now we're talking about Michael's growing up in Cali. That's where Anaheim is, right? Okay, I'm not crazy. And he says how there was a lot of cultural diversity and Chloe was actually also talking about she was raised in a place that was very culturally diverse. Michael lets us know that, you know, his mom is Filipino or Filipina, sorry. And his dad was Greek. 
And Michael's running off at the mouth and Chloe's trying so hard to look interested. Child, I'm not even gonna try to look interested. I'm about to bypass this scene, okay? I'm really sorry, guys. Love you, bye. No, I couldn't just skip it because something very interesting was said at the end of this dinner. And he must have been talking for hours because it's already nighttime there. Good grief. Michael snuck in a little tidbit, a huge tidbit, that he did not tell his mother that he was getting married again. She knew about the jiltation. Sorry, I'm always making up words. You already know me. All right. And uh, she heard about the jiltation the first time and she just, you know, basically is traumatized. So he didn't want to just run and tell her about the second time getting married. But, you know, he says, don't worry. Don't worry. You know, eventually she will know. Michael, that's not something that you hide from your mother. And I am going to have a huge problem with you hiding me, buddy. I mean, how do you hide a surprise invisible wife, but now I'm an actual wife who actually walked down the aisle with you and now you got the nerve to want to hide me. Fool, don't play with me. I want to be crystal clear. Like, I'm not trying to hide you, you know, or hide my family from you or vice versa. Michael says to Chloe, as y'all heard, I'm not hiding you from my family. You are hiding her from your family. What the hell are you talking about? You didn't tell your mother that you got married again. What the hell do you mean I'm not hiding you from my family and vice versa you sound stupid you're really coming off like you're like an actor to me now and it's it's very annoying so austin and becca are back from their trip why didn't we get more footage on the trip lifetime what are you guys hiding dirty rascals they're having this also interesting conversation about traveling airplane rides and all that jazz now they're meeting with dr pia tomorrow and as usual they have that pre dr pia talk how you feeling about seeing Dr. Pia tomorrow? And um, Becca seemed like she was a little apprehensive, actually, in her answer. Okay, I forgot exactly what the answer was, but it was something like, yeah, yeah, I'm ready. But it didn't seem, she didn't seem very convincing. Austin's over here mumbling as usual. I'm going to start calling you mumbles because can you speak up? You sound like you have marbles in your mouth. This is why I keep the closed caption on because I don't understand what the hell half you people are saying majority of the time. Okay. And I hope you guys that are listening understand that I have to very much slow down the way that I talk a lot of the time for two reasons. Number one, I bumble so much that I have to keep doing takes. And number two, sometimes I talk so fast it's hard to understand what I'm saying okay that is never my intention I want you guys to understand what I'm saying in these recaps so if you ever hear me speaking a little slower that particular word gave me a whole lot of trouble Austin asks Becca if she has any bombs that she's going to be dropping at Dr. P's meeting tomorrow and another person with a bunch of filler words can y'all please drop the word like from your vocabulary I beg you I beg you Austin says Physical intimacy is something that we still need to work on. And like he always says, he needs more time. Austin, just tell me how many inches you are because I really believe and I'm really sorry. <laughs> but I just think you have a micro penis. And I think that you're self-conscious. And you guys really fooled us two episodes ago. For some odd reason, you made it seem like you guys were getting it on. And... um Later, we come to find out y'all didn't do nothing. That was surprising. Even more surprising that you're still holding back. And it's okay that you don't want to have sex. But I just want to know what the real what the real issue is. Whatever it is, you're not speaking it. You're not telling us what it is. Austin says that they didn't really have time to take it to the next level. How long does it take to um, pull down your pants and do what you need to do? It doesn't take that long, okay? It could take minutes, virtually minutes. Shut the hell up, Austin. Becca says, Dr. Pierce said that you make time. And he says, when we were in Philly for four days, stuck in the house with two other people or whatever, Austin, y'all could have got a hotel or something. Shut the F up. You're getting on my nerves now. My bad. It wasn't two people. It was two cats and he's allergic to cats. And you knew you were going to a place where you were allergic to cats. Take a Benadryl and shut the hell up. Okay, enough of this. This is just getting ridiculous now. Becca says that she knows Austin means well, but it's very difficult when... She's initiating stuff and she's being rejected and she's running out of ideas. And Becca's like, you know, she really is trying to distinguish between friendship and a marriage without making him uncomfortable, but they're really running out of avenues. So Austin says, well, we've made progress. Austin, what progress have you made? And he keeps making excuses why he says that they don't even have time to do the foreplay throughout the day type of thing, which I'm like, you know what? If you make time, you'll have time. How about that? And then Austin asks Becca what she thinks. And she says, I'm just leaving everything in your court for all that. 
when I tell you I will not sit here and watch them be massaged and watch Michael tell Chloe how he likes to moan out loud in front of other people while he's getting a massage. That was so cringeworthy. And guys, if you're looking for something deep, for me to talk about something deep with me and Chloe and him, the deepest thing was that he didn't tell his mom about the marriage. Okay, I am not getting into this. Let's go on to the next scene. I wanted to call her Chloe or Natalie or somebody else, but I know that's not her name. So Emily is here with her friend. Oh, I love the name Mackenzie. I love your skin. You're very nice skin girl. Anyway, Mackenzie's here with Emily and Emily's talking to her about how Brennan is and Mackenzie just tells her straight up, girl, you need to leave. I don't even know why the hell you're putting up with this crap. Emily, people are telling you the truth. Claire didn't lie to you. Your friend Mackenzie didn't lie to you, but nothing's going to happen until you feel like leaving. She gets into how they had that situation with Dr. Pia and how he claimed she broke his trust. Things definitely took a turn for the worst with Dr. Pia. You broke his trust because you talked about your problems at therapy. <laughs> Biggest load of crap I've ever heard. He's a master manipulator. Mackenzie says that Brennan is disrespectful. He thinks this is the Brennan show. And yeah, um, Emily was saying how she needs to assert herself and place her boundaries but she doesn't even know what her boundaries are because to be quite honest Brennan has you all confused and you're all about Brennan that you're forgetting about yourself which is terrible and she says Mackenzie that is she has no idea why this girl stays with him and Emily is saying that you know something in her mind she doesn't know why she likes this mf -er, but there's nothing to like about him. You like punishment. And the thing is, I think you're brainwashed. That's what I really think. So Emily says she doesn't know what to do. It's hard dealing with someone who doesn't want to be portrayed negatively on camera. And Mackenzie says maybe he should be less of an a-hole. Mackenzie tells Emily that she should run for the hills. But yeah, that was the entire conversation. Becca and Austin are here with Dr. Pia and she asks, how have the intimacy exercises been going? So Austin's trying to say he was initiating stuff and he was y'all they was playing around with the handcuffs but not in a sexual way. How the hell do you play around with handcuffs in a not sexual way? You're either asexual or I don't know what the F, what the F's wrong with you, Austin. Okay. Austin admits that the intimacy slowed down considerably because uh, you know, one of his family members had a birthday and they were there visiting and so, you know, it's Austin that don't want it. So he had an excuse not to do it. I'm sure he was thrilled. Becca tells Dr. Pia she definitely noticed the halt when they were on the trip. I wonder if you could just halt intimacy when you're a regular married couple like that and it would be normal. That doesn't sound normal to me, but what, what do I know? And now Austin's talking about this cat allergy again. I, I swear to God, I wish I could get you in the room with Margo right now. Please sh shut the hell up. Just shut, shut the hell up about this allergy, Austin. So Becca totally understands there wasn't any sexual stuff going on and the family gets to, you know, around when, when he, when they were around family, but just for her, she just, the closeness, the touching and all that stuff for her really put her on edge when it all stopped. And Austin admits that he was a bit uncomfortable doing the PDA thing around family, which I, that part I get cause it's uncomfortable. Not everybody is used to kissing and hug, hugging and touching their mates in front of their family. Becca says that she wished that there was a lot more flirting or you know at least that type of thing because she initiates majority of the time dr pia's suggestion was for them to be way more transparent with each other and to figure out what they both need in order to progress in the relationship becca says she wants to get sexual with him and becca says for her it's basically asking are we progressing and then austin has the nerve to say this are we still moving forward yeah i don't think we'll have any issues more cornball scenes with Chloe and Michael and their cornball pop fake generic music that Married at First Sight loves to curse us with. So they're talking about how they're excited about tomorrow and they're already moving into the apartment. I understand that they had to be accelerated because they came in on the end part of the season, but I really feel like you guys, or maybe this is good because maybe we won't see you guys next season and I will be free and maybe I'll feel like reviewing the next season. Maybe. Right now? It's up in the air. They were already talking about moving into the apartment and damn, y'all only got one day of honeymoon? Lifetime is trying so hard to keep us involved and keep us interested, y'all. 
Everything was going so perfectly well. Michael, is your hair heavy on the right hand side? I'm just wondering because your head's always tilted. Chloe says, you know, I've talked about stuff that I haven't even talked about with any of my other relationships. And all of a sudden she says to Michael, I am emotionally overwhelmed. And Chloe says, it's terrifying, you know, moving, thinking about moving in together. And then she says, she doesn't know if she can do this. You're not sure if you can do this, Chloe. Chloe, go your ass home. And, and just, can we all, can we just... So Michael is very understanding. And he says that, you know, it's been a very intense couple of days. It's been full immersion. He completely understands how she feels. Michael's babbling again. And basically Chloe tells him, it's not your job to try to read my mind, okay? I can read your mind, babe. I know what you're thinking. It's all right. Oh yes, y'all. It's all right, yeah. Sorry, guys. But um, I wonder what Avant's doing right now. I really do. Anyway, guys, I had to. I had to do it to you. I hadn't sang all, all hour. So that's where the conversation is just, the conversation is just him overthinking and over talking. Like, I'm just trying to learn you. I'm just trying to know you. I'm just trying to comfort you. I'm just trying to figure out how to comfort you. Like, Michael, can your lips rest for a minute? And all of a sudden, Chloe is crying with these crocodile tears and she's having a breakdown. What is going on? What is going on with this show? What is really, really going on, y'all? At first, I didn't kind of understand what she was crying about. I am assuming she's crying because of Michael is so unselfish. Why can't you be more selfish? You know what? Anyway, they're both going to give it 100% and see where they land. Whatever. I'm done with this review. So long time no see, everybody. Hello. This is what I look like for those of you who don't know. Let me back this microphone up a little bit and turn it up a little bit so I don't have to be so close. All right. So, first of all, I'm not apologizing for my hair, my makeup, my face. I'm not apologizing for any of that. Okay. I will apologize because this looks a little yellowish, but um, I haven't been on camera in a million years. So, I have to fix. I have to fix this, okay? If you guys prefer for me to be on camera doing these recaps, let a sister know because it's been a minute and I'm just like, honestly, it's so much easier to just do voiceovers, okay? But anyway, I'm done with this review, all right? Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, okay? But before I get off this video, I had something to tell you guys, okay? Guys, as you know, you know, you probably don't know, I've been living in this apartment for about four years, okay? I started my channel in Brooklyn. I brought the YouTube channel. To Guys, these people have called the police on me. They've done a lot of other disgusting things. They've been slamming and banging and banging and slamming and stomping around for the past four years. And what I have to report to you all is something that I've never expected in my entire life. These people picked up their stuff and moved the freak out. They moved out. They left. When I tell you that I am literally disillusioned, when I tell you that I cannot believe that they freaking left, I literally could cry tears of joy. Those people were freaking awful. And I thought, I thought that I was stuck here with them until I moved. I kept saying, I have to get myself together. I have to get everything together and save my money and get out because that's the only way I'm going to ever have peace again. And about a couple of days ago, I saw them moving things. I saw a U-Haul here, but I always see U-Hauls in front of the house. They were always having people, random people come live here. But this time it was different because they were putting all their stuff outside. And there's a bunch of garbage in front of the house. And I was like, are these people moving? And the very first sign that they were moving to me was they removed all their blinds and curtains from the windows. So they stayed one extra night yesterday and they took the remainder of their stuff tonight or today. What is it? It's 2-2. Two, two. They took the remainder of their stuff today and they're gone. Guys, here's my lesson in all of that. You don't have to flip out. You don't have to act up. I have regrets of the way that I behaved a lot of the time. And a lot of the time I don't regret it because why are you provoking me? If you provoke me, you get what you deserve. I'm not even going to like, I, you're provoking me. Don't provoke me. Leave me alone. Okay, because you don't you don't have to like me, but you also don't have to go out of your way to try to start trouble with me because that's when I get nasty and that's when it's going to be a really, 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 really bad problem. OK, but guys, that's what I wanted to announce. I am free. No more chains holding me. I can think of so many free songs, but 
I've sang enough for this video and I'm not going to make this video any much longer because you guys are tired. I know you are. Anyway, if you want me to be on camera more and you want me to do my recaps on camera sometimes, holler at your girl. Let me know. If you don't, then I won't. And I will tell you this. I noticed that when I do voiceovers, I get more views. I don't know what the hell you guys are trying to say, but I don't appreciate it. Alrighty. Anyway, anyway, guys, I'm done. Thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.